Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Andrew and today we're going to be doing a NCAA 14 Dynasty. Uh, as you can see, I already have it loaded up to the main menu of uh, the Dynasty. Just to show everyone real quick, you know, I'm not tampering with recruiting or anything. Uh, just going to go ahead and skip. Get that on camera. We're solid there. No, uh, no shenanigans going on. And we'll just wait for this to go ahead and load all the way through. All right, so now we'll just back out. And we're all set. No shenanigans, nothing. Um, I'm also on the base game, the original NCAA 14, not the college revamp version. Uh, I kind of got to the party late on that. The hand's not working for my PS3 can't get it to download or anything like that so we're just rocking with the base version which is fine um if uh i ever figure out how to do it i most definitely will but for right now rocking with the base game uh i actually grabbed this custom team builder before the website went down so this isn't mine uh, actual team that i created don't know who made it but if i can give them props somehow some way later absolutely will but we're just going to go ahead and uh, look at the schedule first. We are starting out in the Sun Belt Conference. Um, so uh, we're starting out pretty solid. Might add, change some games to make it a little more exciting. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, I did go ahead and throw in the UGF Pandas from the big old Drewski. Uh, not the expert, his dynasty one of the OGs, if you know it, you know it. Uh, but this is his team builder, his team. Go watch him. One of the originals. One of the best series I've ever watched, honestly, on this game. Just super fun. Got me into wanting to make a dynasty of my own. So I thought it would be fun to throw them in uh, and make them a little rival of our team. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to I'm going to keep Stanford. I think that's a good game. Don't know how I like two bye weeks back to back, but we're gonna rock with it for right now. Um, hmm. Northwestern Army. We're gonna change the Army game. Uh, not a huge fan of playing the Army game. Uh, I do. I did also update my roster. So Coastal Carolina is the New Mexico State Aggies. Don't know how to fix that. Uh, that was just something they did from the rosters I downloaded. So New Mexico State is Coastal Carolina. Uh, they'll still have the Aggies, logos, jerseys, fields, everything like that, but it has the Coastal Carolina players. Uh, so we're going to scroll through here. Hmm, not much rocking on this week. You know, I think Auburn would be a fun game. Well, we'll go with Auburn. Yeah, I like that. Can I add another one? No? Okay. Uh, yeah. Auburn would be a good game. Probably going to lose. But, you know, right before we get into the bulk of conference play so i think i think that's something we rock with i think that's a good good way to go out before conference play strength of schedule is not that great but it's fine i mean i i like it maybe we can look to change northwestern but yeah i mean uh oh here's another one uh down here the fiu i don't even the panthers i think they're now james madison uh i probably won't ever play these teams Honestly, because that can get really confusing, but uh, the more you know. Um, um, you know, we could play TCU. They did finish second, um, so that would be a good, nice little whooping for us. Or if we want to go somewhat, you know, close, a closer game, uh, I'm probably going to lose all of these games because I'll show later. I'm on Heisman difficulty, haven't touched the sliders or anything, just because... I haven't played this game in so long that uh, I feel like Heisman difficulty is going to just beat me to a pulp in the beginning. You know, Old Dominion. I like Old Dominion. I think they're cool. Let's play Old Dominion. Yeah. Go ahead and save that. So now let's meet the team.
First up, we're going to be taking a look at our starting quarterback, senior Peter Athens out of Park, South Carolina. Beautiful throw over the middle. He's going to be the man to lead this team. Going to need him to keep dropping dimes like this one you'll see here if we are to be successful. Following our quarterback, we have the starting halfback, Terrence West, redshirt junior, out of Elkridge, Maryland. He's going to be the workhorse of this offense. Going to need to put the team on his back, though. Here we have our starting wide receiver, Derek Joseph, out of Hyattsville, Maryland. He's going to be the primary guy for the next couple of years, so we're hoping for big things for him. Next up, we have our wide receiver, too, Leon Kennard, making a quick grab over the middle here out of Farmville, North Carolina. He's going to be one of our go-to guys here this season. We're going to need him to step up and play big. Up next, we have his high school teammate, Spencer Wilkins, also out of Farmville, North Carolina, one of our slot guys. He's going to be big and making plays on those short routes, getting in space and doing his thing. Following that, we have James Oboe, big man standing at six foot four out of Bristol, PA. He's going to be the primary tight end, pass catcher, and blocker. Beautiful catch from him there, trying to fight his way into the end zone. What a player, and we can't wait to see what he does. Rounding out the offense, we have receiver Arian Scott out of Evans, Georgia. Big man has some good routes. He says his favorite manga of all time is Rooster Fighter, and he makes a great catch in traffic. Starting on the defensive side of the ball, we have Arnold Farmer out of Fairland, Maryland. Big man out here going to push him down and get a sack. Up next, we have Drew Sherpico, 6 foot 5 out of Lebanon, PA. He is a monster and he loves his mama. He's going to go try and sack this guy right here and he's going to run him down. Look at that speed in that tackle. Beautiful work. Coming up next for the defensive line, we have Brendan Gannon out of Pulaski, Virginia. Great on the block shedding, and he is going to make a big impact. And rounding out the defensive line, we have Ryan Delaire out of Rockville, Maryland. He is pushing through that block, and he is going to run the quarterback down. Going to make a big impact on this team. Here at Slot Corner, we have Ryan Mays out of Monroe, Georgia. He's a heavy hitter, and he's going to need to be if he's going to continue to play on this team. And here's another look at that pass breakup. Good play. Up next, we have Thomas Bradley, number three junior free safety out of Washington, D.C. He's a heavy hitter as well, and uh, he's going to need to keep playing this good coverage as he should make a pick here, but just changes to a swat. An absolute brick for hands, knocking that ball down. Up next here, taking a look at the linebacking core, number 22, Brighton Barr. The only underclassman to be starting on this team. The sophomore standing at six foot one out of Dale City, Virginia, with a big hit. Taking a look once again at that hit from another angle. Going to be huge for this team. Taking another look at the corner core here, we have Jordan Love standing at six foot one out of Monroe, Georgia. Big hit there, making a tackle and saving that play. Up next in the linebacking core, we have Monte Gaddis. He's a balanced guy who can blow up the run or drop back into coverage. He's out of Washington, D.C., number 11. He's going to be big for this team, one of the better players here on defense. Up next, we've got Walter Dunstan. Dunst being an appropriate name for uh, the lack of play rack here out of Goldenrod, Florida, standing at six foot one. Up next, we've got Ty Smith Jr. standing at six foot tall. Doesn't need to look to break up passes. He is out of San Francisco, California. Great pass break up there. We'll take a look at it again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set up recruiting recruiting rules. What I'm gonna do for uh every year recruiting uh even if i go multiple years we you know depends on how it works out uh i'm only gonna go after people who are interested in the team uh i think that's pretty fair with how recruiting is in this game because you can just snag a bunch of four or five stars on low lock uh if you've played this game before you know you know you know the the stratting the strat for recruiting so to make it uh interesting and a little bit harder on myself. I'm going to only recruit people who are interested in the team, but I think it would be okay 
to have one player to go after regardless of uh their stars their caliber their interest i think that would be kind of uh a good way to go about it but we'll see we'll see for right now i think i'm just going to stick with uh people who are interested in the team just to add the, that extra degree of challenge so i'm going to go ahead and throw all these people on the recruiting board and then uh i'll catch you guys when we go to to scout them all right, so now I have everybody that like I possibly could throw on the recruiting board up, uh, for the exception of a few people. You know, I uh, didn't want to max it out. I stopped at about 30. But, you know, I grabbed a, a good bit of people because, uh, as you could tell, the team needed a lot of work. Uh, but hopefully we can uh, sign a bunch of people this year, develop them in the future, and it'll work out all right. So starting out, we have quarterback Seth Thompson. Now, quarterback would be massive early on. Uh, this one's a 71 overall. I doubt he stays that high, uh, but if he does, that would be fantastic. Uh, well, let's... He stays the same. Wow, okay. Uh, that's good for now. Uh, definitely don't want him going down. Brandon Jenkins. Uh, he was a... Um, speed back if i remember correctly yes he was he ran a uh, 4 4 4 40 if i remember that correctly so hopefully uh he can go up oh 89 speed that's great to see already with 74 elusiveness going up one overall that'll be good uh if we could get him speed kills in this game absolutely ryan sullivan isn't panning out Ooh, Joe Randolph, the only wide receiver interested. 85 speed, it goes up three overall. That is huge. We need to uh, keep an eye on him, definitely. Tight ends, surprisingly, we had so many tight ends interested in the team. Five tight ends. I'm pretty sure there was a few that I left off. But definitely tight end is something I'm looking for. That extra blocking would be great if uh, any of these guys can block. But we'll start off with Aaron Lee here. Going down in overall, but we won't, you know, discard him just yet because, honestly, anything is an improvement at this point. Matt Johnson, he's more of a receiving tight end. I think he's only six foot one, but you can see the B speed and acceleration. So uh, maybe if tight end doesn't work out, we can move him to wide receiver. Um, and he goes up one overall, eighty two speed, not bad for a tight end. Wouldn't really work at wide receiver like I was hoping, but that 77 catching is phenomenal for an 80 or a 65 overall. We're going to move on to Tyree Smith here. Um, let's see. He's six foot four. So yeah, he is listed as a receiving tight end, but doesn't really look like he has the receiving attributes or really anything. Uh, he does have 77 spec catch, so that's nice. Um, definitely going to keep them on the board for now. Right now, I'm, looks like Matt Johnson's the favorite, but we got to scout the last two, which is Paris Barrow and Nate Phillips. And Paris goes up two overall. He's a 70 overall. Definitely he's got some great blocking. Uh, you know, if we could get him and Matt, Paris to block Matt to go out and run routes, that'd be phenomenal. Uh, 79 trucking actually went down, but like 79 trucking, pretty massive. And finally for the tight ends, Nate Phillips. Show us something. Uh, nothing really going on here. Uh, 69 speed. Nice. But okay, moving on, we have uh, Richard Frund, Frout. I don't, I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna change that last name if I somehow manage to sign him. But... Richard, the only tackle interested in the squad. And he stays the same. But you know what? We'll take it. Most of our uh, team is juniors and seniors, so we definitely got to build up some youth here. Next is the only guard interested in the team at a 52 overall. Anyway, let's scout him. And he's staying the same as well. Strength goes up. That's nice. And uh, I'm starting to see a trend here, guys. Uh, only center interested in the squad uh terrell brooks and he stays the same we'll take it 71 at center would be 
great for the future. Now we're moving on to the defensive side. So there's a good bit of uh, defensive ends we're going after here. Uh, like I said, lots of juniors and seniors all over the team. So we definitely need to, to scout everybody, sign everybody we can just to build up the roster. And Travis Bush is going to go up two overall. Definitely something you like to see. Moving right along, got an, another one, Walter Fuller, uh, going up one overall. Love to see it. Cole Perez, going up one overall. We like to see it. Uh, that's a good start for the defense. Another Ethan Thornton, going up one overall. The tackling, nice. Agility, nice. Moving on to Deshaun Richardson. Mm. We'll keep him for now, but. Not looking great, Deshaun. Now, two outside linebackers we had. Dave Stone and Mike Phillips. So let's go ahead and Dave Stone, the higher overall. Staying the same. So not much to go off of, really. The stamina, he'll be pretty good at staying on the field. And now Mike Phillips. He is also staying the same. Uh, the man coverage, though. Oof. Not looking good. Middle linebackers, two of them. So that's something good to look for. Middle linebackers, hard to come by in NCAA. If you know, you know. So Greg Franklin going down. Oof. But his finesse move went up. So I don't know how that works, but, you know, whatever. We're moving over to Jeff Rush. And I have ran out of points to scout. That's not good. But uh, I guess in week one, we will try to scout the rest of these guys. We have 22 to 30. So we have eight people left to scout. Uh, definitely wanted all those points in week one to throw into people. But what are you going to do? You know, now we're going to go on ahead and sim to the start of the season. Um, I mean, did everything we really could. I'm not going to redshirt anybody because I... Really don't want anybody leaving due to playtime uh, just because of how low overall the team is. Uh, I think we just play everybody. They lose a year of eligibility, and it, it is what it is. I will see you guys in week one. All right, after a nice two minutes of my PS3 simming to week one, we're finally here, and it is a bye week. Unfortunate. But this works out well for us. Uh, you know, we can go ahead and scout the rest of the, the people on the board, and then we can uh, throw some points into people and, uh, you know, go ahead and sim to week two. Uh, but I will play Stanford in the next video, most likely. Uh, so we are going to actually go to coaching real quick. The skill tree. Our illustrious head coach, Big Bobby Budson. Uh, I did go ahead and throw the first point into scouting as soon as I got into the the dynasty. Did not show that on camera. But our DC, Tim Bird, calling the plays for defense. What do we want to throw this in? Definitely recharge. With such low overalls, I think injury and stamina is just something we're going to desperately need. To even contend in games. Our offensive coordinator, Andy Muse, calling the plays on offense. Um, ball security would be great to have, but I think we're going to stick with the stamina and injury. Just because, like I said, we're going to probably need it just to compete with these other teams. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And uh, hopefully those pan out. So we'll see when we come to the Stanford game. You know, it's just uh, something... We'll have to keep an eye out on. And look at that coaching staff led by big Bobby Budson. He's somewhere on the screen. I know it. Try to find him if you can. Well, you know what? Let's, let's go look at the, the, the preseason polls. Let's go just check out what, what the rankings look like. So, of course, uh, Alabama at number one. Uh, it's pretty the usual, just about. Ohio State at two, Georgia at three, Clemson at four. That's probably the top three you would expect. Clemson, um, you know, this is preseason, so yeah, you could expect Clemson at four. Notre Dame at five, A&M at six, Utah at seven. That's a surprise, a Pac-10 team. 
not Pac-10, Pac-12, God. A Pac-12 team being in the top 10, not something I'm used to. Uh, Michigan at 8, I would expect them to be higher, but, you know, it's the preseason poll, so it doesn't matter. Oklahoma at 9, Baylor at 10. We'll just scroll through really quick. Um, if I skipped your favorite team and they're in the top 25, my bad. But that's your top 25. Uh, it's definitely going to subject to change after week one. You know, let's let's check out the Heisman watch. Why not? Let's see who's in the running for the Heisman. A fullback. Why did I even? Yeah, that that's on me. All right, toughest places to play. Let's let's see what this is about. Let's see what we're at. <laughs> Go Lord, who who? Where are we at? <laughs> the big house is in last. No, that's so so sad to see. But <laughs> we're uh, we're in close proximity. We'll probably give the big house a run for their money considering they have a higher average attendance. But what is our place called? Johnny Unitas Stadium. That's the first time I've seen that, so good to know. With an average of 20,000, I doubt we even sell that out. <laughs> so let's head back to recruiting, finish up the eight people that we already did, and we'll try to throw points at people accordingly. And I think what we'll do for the meantime is we're just going to go like each week scouting, whatever I've had left over from uh, scouting this week, like the eight leftover is what I'll just keep using over and over to scout until we can kind of get some more XP to fully scout people. I just think that might be the best way to go about it. Scouting each, each week instead of trying to scout all these people as quickly as possible and we run out of leads. So last person we left off on, Noah Lowe. Ooh, Noah Lowe will probably be somebody we throw some points at pretty pretty early on. 76 zone coverage. I do like to run a lot of zones, so that is definitely something that is appealing to me. Ryan Logan. I th I'm going to call him Ryan. I think that's how it's, it's pronounced. 59 overall. Let's see if you can go up a little bit, Ryan. No. But 88 speed, 91 excel. 81 jumping and 81 stamina. That's not bad for our 59 overall. We do know that those coverage stats are going to be terrible, though, with that overall staying at 59. <laughs> Marcus Hughes, let's see what we got going on here. Ooh, going up some. I hope that trend stays that way. That 84 acceleration is going to come in handy. I can tell you that much. Oh. 78 play rec. Also good because I won't be using him. So something to look out for. At Barrett uh, is the next one up on the list. Let's see. Meh. I got nothing out of that besides he doesn't know plays. Here we have Steve Nelson, 63 overall. Show me. Okay. He locked us out. What do you mean he locked us out? Are you. Okay. Steve, I, I know, I know, I know we might have some overalls higher than you on the depth chart, but I promise you playing time, it wouldn't be an issue, but whatever, maybe that'll fix itself, it might just be a bug. Nate Carter now, let's see what he's got, mm, 53 tackling, that's not good, but everything else looked okay, I mean he went up one overall. Now we're on two. The free safeties, we have two of them. I would be glad to get one of them. Uh, we'll start off with Stephen Ferry here, 66 overall. He went down, but we hold out hope for 100%. He goes up. Next, Thomas Johnson. Uh, 70 zone coverage isn't bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, what else can I really gather from that? He can jump somewhat good. And finally, strong safety. We have Peter Shaw, uh, 69 overall. Nice. Um, and hopefully he goes up in overall or stays the same. I will take that. The coverage is great, actually, for 
what we consider good <laughs> at this point in the team. Uh, no finesse move whatsoever, but you know what? I don't care. The coverage is there. So now that I have everybody at least 25% scouted, we can go ahead and throw some points at people. And uh, I'm going to try my best to distribute it between offense and defense, be as balanced as possible, but we'll, we'll just see how it goes. So to start off, definitely want Peter Shaw with that coverage. It's going to be a deal, a massive deal to have that on the team. Next, I'm going to be throwing some points into Marcus Hughes because uh, we have the lead already, which is great. And he also has that 84 Excel with 78 play rec. So I think he is on the up and up Marcus Hughes. Another person we're going to be throwing points into is Noah Lowe. Uh, already have the lead for him, which is great. And... He has that 76 zone, which is great for a guy who likes zone like myself, so he gets 500. So I just actually uh, realized I made a mistake. Jeff Rush was where we were supposed to pick up, but we didn't. So let's go ahead and scout him real quick. And uh, okay, I mean, not bad, not bad. So next, I will actually be throwing some points into Jeff Rush. I don't think I'm going to do 500. I don't know why I maxed him out. I think I'm going to do uh 300 here uh just because i don't know if i'm gonna want him 100 percent after i fully scout him but if i do i want to still at least be in the race for him so we're gonna throw 300 on uh just because i know middle linebackers are so hard to get committed and for the defensive ends i'm gonna throw points into walter fuller and cole perez uh two highest rated guys so far but i think they have the most impact Number six on Cole, so I'm hoping we can move up pretty quick on him. And uh, we're number three on Walter, so I have a, a good feeling we can catch up to Maryland and Navy and overtake it. Now for the offense, obviously we got to throw some points at Terrell Brooks. It just makes the most sense. I mean, we, we, we need blocking in a bad way. Next, uh, I think I'm going to throw some points into uh, Richard Frund, uh, the tackle. I swear if I get this guy, I'm changing that last name. I can't say it. I don't know how to say it. So for the tight ends, uh, I think I'm actually going to go up to two. But the thing is, we're running a little bit low on points here. So what I'm going to do is uh, throw 300 into Matt and another 300 into Paris. Uh, I think his last name's Baro. Uh, another guy, if I get him, I might change his last name. I think it's Barrow, so I'm going to stick with Barrow for now. If I'm mispronouncing it, oh well. So, after uh, much consideration, I actually am going to back down a little bit on, uh, Walter Fuller and Cole Perez. I'm going to throw 350 into both of them. Uh, I just don't have enough points to go around right now. I mean, that's what happens when you're a level one coach. And after moving around some points, I can throw a little bit more into... Joe Randolph, we desperately need this guy. Uh, only wide receiver who's interested in us. So, I mean, it's a it's a given we need this guy bad. And with the 100 points I have left, uh, I might rework a few things. Um, if I do, I'll cut and show you guys the full list. But right now, we're just rocking 100 points into Seth Thompson. With the bonus, it's about, it is 345. So hopefully that's enough to stay within reach. All right, guys, so I did uh, move one thing around, and it's really super simple. Bumped Seth Thompson up to 250 after I took a little bit away from Paris Barrow. I noticed he had a pretty big bonus, so I'm hoping that bonus can kind of keep us in the running until we get some more points to allocate to people. So that's it for recruiting. I'll catch you guys uh, wherever I go next. So, guys, I went ahead and uh, sim to week two. We're playing Stanford. I will play that in uh, in the next video. I am going to wrap it up around here for this video. Um, so most likely I will play the this game and record the next episode right after I uh, hit stop record on this. So if you do have any, you know, comments or suggestions or anything, I won't actually see them until uh, after I post this video and I will have already played this game. So whenever uh, I do come across them, I won't record too far ahead just to make sure i get those comments and stuff read and uh improvised into the the game itself but for uh the stanford game i will have uh already played it before i posted this video so with that being said guys 
Thanks for stopping by the channel. Thank you for your support. And uh, I hope to see you next video for the Stanford game. And with that, I am out. Peace.